What's up, awesome humans on the internet? We are back in the comfy bed of awesome. Well, I guess you're not here, really. I'm here. I say we, metaphorically. I really don't think all of us would fit. So over summer vacation, I spend a majority of my time in the comfy bed of awesome, and I also spend a grand majority of my time doing this. So this week's question comes from this epic question asker about yawning and why does it happen and is it actually contagious? So like many of the previous week's questions, this question doesn't really have a definite answer? I love this, it's like Lunchbox Science is becoming the channel of things that people don't really know the answer to but have awesome hypotheses about. Somehow that's not quite as catchy. Anyway, there are lots of theories about why we yawn, but nobody really knows for sure, as usual, about the real evolutionary basis of it. Most current and most widely accepted theory, however, is that yawning cools off your brain. What? Apparently, your brain is pretty much like a computer. First of all, it's basically an unexplored universe unto itself, but also, like a computer, it runs best when cool, and also like a computer, it can overheat. So scientists now theorize that when your brain is too hot, you yawn. The jaw movement that occurs when we yawn apparently causes the maxillary sinus, or the pair of the largest sinus cavities in the skull, to expand and contract, sending air into the brain and decreasing its temperature. Support for this has come in studies that have shown that brain temperature spikes right before you yawn and then rapidly decreases after you yawn. Studying why we yawn and how it works has major implications in the treatment of both epilepsy and migraines. These are both disorders that show a rapid increase in brain temperature before an episode, and yawning or thinking about how sinus contraction can cool off the brain could greatly increase our understanding of how to treat these. Insomniacs could also benefit from the study of yawning. A primary reason why insomniacs can't fall asleep is because they don't regulate body temperature as well as other people, and your body temperature needs to decrease before you fall asleep, so yawning and how it cools off the brain could help insomniacs go to sleep. And now I come to the question about the contagious nature of yawning. So, I kid you not, but a recent evolutionary psychologist has written a book called The Oxford Handbook of the Self. I say, dear fellow, have you read The Oxford Guide to the Self? There's all sorts of fascinating things about yourself in it. Hilarious, I know. But in this guidebook, and I quote, he states that yawning is a primitive empathetic mechanism related to mental state attribution. So what that really means is that seeing someone yawn, even talking about or thinking about yawning, can trigger... Sorry... <sighs> can trigger neuron pathways in your brain that empathize with your fellow organisms and thus cause you to imitate what they are doing. This happens with yawning and not necessarily with other behaviors because yawning is an innate and a reflex behavior, so you don't really have control over it. And you can't really do it for real on command. You're yawning aren't you? Sorry guys. But hey, your brains are cooler. I hope you guys liked this week's episode. Um, let me know. Give me some feedback. I love to hear from you guys. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, here on YouTube. Ask me questions. Also, I'm thinking maybe of starting a personal vlog about college life and studenthood and science and stuff. So if you'd be interested, let me know. Maybe I'll do it anyway. I don't know. But you guys are awesome and don't forget to pack your lunchbox. Bye, da, da.